Yes, yeah. new balls as well. Good evening, everybody. Wherever you're watching frame. this, take Tony a moment Sullivan to savour the magnitude of the occasion to come. This is the renewal of a world-class rivalry that dates back to 1992. For almost three decades, the lives of these two very different men have been inextricably linked, their paths converging time and time again on a relentless pursuit of glory. Between them, they've won it all and have absolutely nothing left to prove, which is why I suspect tonight will mean everything to both of them. We're watching two of the greats. It's O'Sullivan against Williams for a place in the Welsh Open final. Enjoy. <laughs> Alongside me, looking forward to every second of the drama, as we all are, is Dominic Dale. Very good evening, Dominic. In two incredible careers, we should savour these moments because we don't know how much longer they're going to be going toe-to-toe -to -toe in the big ones. One. Yes, a very good evening, Rob. A very good evening, everybody. I was thinking the same thing, actually, Rob, before this match. I just wonder how many big matches these two will contest in future years. Both are getting on a little bit now. Only O'Sullivan won. But it has to be said, Mark Williams is still playing some very good snooker, and of course, Ronnie O'Sullivan our current world champion is at or near his best. Mark Williams, One. I think in his interview, is quite right that it's unlikely he'll score more than Ronnie O'Sullivan when he gets the opportunities. I say that because Ronnie hasn't made a century break in this year's event yet. Ronnie O'Sullivan certainly has and has been scoring very well in some of his matches, but it mustn't be forgotten. He didn't play Seven. his quarter-final match. Ali Carter had to withdraw. Realness. Nothing COVID-related, but possibly Eight. issues to do with the Crohn's disease, which he's had as a youngster. But it's Mark Williams who has the first decent opportunity here, but the black, as you can see, up near bulk. 13. That will cause Mark a problem. Of course, we're down to the one table set up now, so obviously a brand new cloth on both the bed and the cushion rails. But having been in the studio all afternoon, I felt that the speed of the table was a little slower than it has been over the last few days in the multi table setup. Cushions are definitely slow, and that's not a bad thing for the players, they can control the keyboard better then. I think that may be end of break for Mark, unless he wants to risk the red. 19. That's just to the right of the pack of reds. He's looking at it, but he'll be bringing reds into play here. This needs to go in. Well played. Two for the price of one. Not quite. Well, 20. that's very handy for Mark, because if he can pot the black now, he's got nothing to do with the cue ball. He knows he'll be on his next red. surprise Mark chose the blue in favour of the black although saying that if he'd potted the black it would be tied up a little reds to the left and the right of the black spot would be blocking both corners but just look at the position of the reds here Mark has a great chance to take this opening frame 26 
32. I think Mark Williams has been around long enough to know that his best chance of beating his great rival is to be aggressive and positive and take the match to him. Ronnie O'Sullivan is so hard to beat, especially if he gets a one or two frame advantage right at the start of a match. From Mark Williams' perspective, this is on its way to be the perfect start. Forty-five. Well, Ronnie had the first opportunity. Mr. Black into the right corner. In all honesty, looked extremely tight. Let's have a look at it. Oh no, it, it does go okay. It wasn't particularly tight. Just put it to the near jaw. Beautifully smooth half century break. 53. And can he get himself over the line in this opening frame and just send his fellow classmate of 92 a little message that he is absolutely up for it tonight? So just this red and any colour required. A perfect start from Mark Williams' point 60. of view. 59 ahead, 59 remaining, so this pink is all that Mark Williams requires. 66. Excellently done by the three-time world champion. That one had a little bit of a wobble, but it dropped. And this is only the second frame that Ronnie O'Sullivan has conceded on this run to the semi-finals. Although, remember, of course, he did have a walkover in the quarters against Ali Carter. Mark Williams giving the balls a bit of a thrash. Mark Williams, 73. Great break of 73. Technically the frame is over, O'Sullivan choosing to play on, as is his right, just to get a feel for the table. Yes, because these conditions are alien to Ronnie. There's one same table set up as a same brand new cloth on bed and cushions. Well, I think you can say Mark Williams is enjoying himself, but that could be a mistake. Because Ronnie O'Sullivan now is among the balls the chance to make a little break and get a feel of the reaction of the ball on the cloth. One. He'll be assessing this table with every shot that he plays here. And that was a rather injudicious thing for Mark Williams to do, I feel. Seven. Well, if you remember, Dominic, I think you Eight. were working on the Scottish Open final when Ronnie O'Sullivan was taking on Mark Selby. And Ronnie, I think, did the same, either in the first or second frame. He came to the table requiring a huge number of snookers, but Selby played that first frame 14. dead back, even though he was over the line. He was quite happy to get involved with an exchange of snookers and safety. 15. Even though he was well over the line. So perhaps you think it was a mistake for... Willow to come to the table and give the Reds a big lash. I, I do from a point of view that he left Ronnie right in amongst the balls. If he'd have got away with it and left things safe, it wouldn't have been so bad. But Ronnie's playing a few sort of deep screw shots here and killing the ball beautifully just to see when he strikes the cue ball purely how much backspin he's getting. He's working out this cloth every time.
26. For instance, there is several inches short of being on the brown line, so one will bear that in mind and assess the fact that the cushions are maybe on the slower side than normal. Thirty-five. Well, the pink doesn't draw. Ronnie it's going to turn out to be a useful two and a half minutes at the table for Ronnie O'Sullivan. But the first blood goes to Mark Williams. Mark Williams, six and does indeed make absolutely certain. But he has taken the opening frame. Good start by the Welshman. But um, he leads 1 0 and another slow break off the bottom cushion. Great insight there from the 1997 champion of the world. Three time world champion warmed up with sausage, egg, and chips. Well, I guess, Dominic, we shouldn't be too surprised because en route to his third world title, he ended up going for a late night kebab and didn't finish till about half past three because he was so hungry and so exhausted after his press conferences. And you know, he he's such an open, honest, down-to-earth person. I, I think that's why people like him. There is something of the everyman in him. Likes a beer, likes a kebab, and loves playing snooker. Mark very much is a, is a family man these days, married to Joe, about 400 children, and he just loves that family life. Snooker, I don't think, is as important to him these days. He tries to deflect some of the attention that's on him, some of the things that he says in interviews, maybe that he's not practicing as much, maybe he doesn't think he can play as well as somebody like one or seven of them these days, but believe me, he knows he can. long red Five. to get himself in at the start of this second frame that little visit of 35 after Williams had secured frame one could well have been quite useful for the four-time Welsh Open champion another thing Rob, worth mentioning I, I think when Ron is <coughs> intent on winning and wants to win and compete he would do just that you know he'd pop those balls at the end of the frame and try and work out the way the table's playing sometimes when he's a little disinterested he probably just conceded I canned in a couple of reds there but has one just run past the pink to be available okay. in that right center pocket just see it here moving forward has it gone far enough from Ronnie's point of view? No, it didn't appear to have gone far enough. Ronnie on 7 13. It's a little unfortunate from Ronnie. Played a nice little cannon into the reds there. It was well controlled. But didn't quite land on anything. <coughs> Just looking at a couple of reds actually in the middle of that cluster, they look very close to this left corner to me. Ah, oh, they were. Now as Mark finished on a colour, I'll tell you something. One. He's very unlucky there. He was so close to being on the pink. Let's have a look at this. There, there this plant that I was referring to. It was absolutely dead set. Now, at this stage it could have been on pink or black. 
a couple of the reds just moved and well one by the cubal there as you can see is heavily blocked off the pink to left centre and if Mark had been on that pink could have easily been looking at 2-0 now is he going to take the risk of the blue awkward queuing you can see Ah, oh, this red that's by his hand there that, that could be the difference between potting this and missing it Mark Williams won He was unlucky not to be on the pink, as you said, Dominic. And that was so close to being a great opener for this frame. But those are the margins. Yeah, but Ronnie needs to do something with this, really. If he were to make a positional error or miss a pot. And Mark Williams could still extend his lead. One. Well, you know, Sullivan needs to try to do to Mark what Mark did to him in that first frame and make a big break. Excellent break in that first frame from Mark of 73. That's always a frame winner. Just needs to try, to, if he can, to get onto the black. Right. Now, in potting this red to right corner, it would mean the black is available into the same pocket. It's very awkward to get onto the black otherwise. It's a little bit of a risk for Ronnie to play for the black just mm -hmm. now, because if he makes a mistake with it, he may not have a secondary colour, because the pink doesn't pot to the right centre, so... He's not going to have an alternative, so he certainly doesn't need to bother with the black just yet. If he can play for that pink into the left centre, he should then be able to play on a choice of reds to get that black into play. Six. Is. is the pink spot occupied? Personally, I don't think it is. But I don't think there'll be a lot in it. Oh, I can see the pink spot. It will go. And one is on his ideal red here. A little trio of reds just above the black. The top one of those. He can knock that in. I think he's got the angle Twelve. to play for the black in the opposite corner. Dominic, what's your assessment of the walkover in the quarter-final pro Sullivan? Because you can read that two 90. ways. You could say that he's even fresher for tonight's match and the potential of the final or do you think it would have interrupted his rhythm and it would have been better for him to have a match and, and sustain the momentum that he'd been generating midway through the week it's a tricky one to assess really I mean matches only sort of best of seven best of nine and Ron is the fittest player on the tour in all likelihood and so I don't think it would have fatigued him in any way I think probably he'd have liked that extra 26. match. Um, purely because all his opponents and the other players that were left in the event had all played and he hadn't. But, saying that, Mark coming into this match didn't have any particular advantage because we're down now to the one table setup and conditions are new for everybody here in the semi finals. 27.
Well, this is the perfect red for Ronnie to be on. He can easily play for the black now if he wishes. 33. Thirty-four. Again, just that little shot there that Ronnie played will be a bit of a marker for him in terms of the speed of this top cushion, which is the most important cushion for any player to assess and note. Oh, took a bit of a risk there, cannoning into other balls, but he does have a red to the right centre. Forty-one. Okay. He needs to be careful here. He's getting near the winning line in this frame, but the balls are still out in the open. The mistake here could be costly, but that 42. was beautifully cued. You can see he drew that cue ball back at least two feet with minimal effort. And when you have a new cloth on the table bed, that's the sort of reaction you can expect out the ball. 49. 50. 57. Parity is restored by this fine visit to the table from Ronnie O'Sullivan. Well, last month we saw an absolutely phenomenal 64. match between O'Sullivan and Higgins. Higgins, the third member of this triumvirate of excellence from 1992. There were five centuries in that Friday night match at the Masters. And the early signs are... That these two old warriors are poised and ready for another epic battle all the way to the line. Superb from both players. 80. 81. 81. Well, we had a fantastic start to the other semi final today. Rates of 135 and 52 at the beginning of that match by Jordan Brown. 90. It's pretty much equally impressive in a way. Ninety-three. Ronnie O'Sullivan had a century of 123 in his first round demolition of Robbie Williams, and he had another 97. against Martin Gould. This for his third of the week. One hundred and two. And it's made it look easy. Yeah, Robin, this is century number 1089 of his career. That's absolutely incredible. The only professional player to make over a thousand centuries. But the break does finally end. Ronnie 104 from Ronnie O'Sullivan. He betters Mark Williams' effort of 73 in frame one. And it's Ronnie O'Sullivan who draws level here. It's one all.
big Adios breaks. Sullivan. I mean, 1100, it's quite incredible. Safe to say, I think now he's got the, uh, the feel of the cloth. 1-1. <laughs> Well, they've both got their eye in. Williams in the first, O'Sullivan in the second. And the early signs are that this has the potential to become one of their classic confrontations. Let's hope so, Dominic. Well, it's clear to see that 107 has designs on winning this match. He's right up for this. As of course is Mark Williams. I'm sure our first finest Jordan Brown will be tucked away in his hotel room enjoying our coverage here. Just wondering who he's going to be playing in tomorrow's final. I did mention in his interview they'd like to play Ronnie O'Sullivan. I'm not sure I would. Checking out the stats after Jordan's win. He's never played a competitive match against Ronnie. He's played Mark Williams twice. Funnily enough, second of those matches was last year's World Open in the second round, which Mark Williams won. Four frames to two. I think, to be honest, Jordan will just be absolutely over the moon that he's through to his maiden ranking event final worked so hard to get back on tour whoever he faces he knows he's going to be up against one of the all-time greats safety from Mark and I think his safety play will need to be good tonight if you leave long reds on for Ronnie O'Sullivan where he can get his hand on the table he won't miss many of them he may even be able to tempt this red into the right corner that wasn't far away and that pink's causing Mark a little bit of a problem not easy to play a shot down this right hand side of the table but Mark can just about flick off the I red next to the pink. Had he not been able to do that he'd have been in trouble. And the bolt colour there to just deflect the cue ball over to the right slightly. Again, the pink is hiding most of that half of the table, but I just wonder if Mark can play a safety off the red, just the right of the pink spot here. He's just got to avoid those reds that are by the black there, though. Doesn't like it. Is he going to take this red on? Bold shot choice. You certainly need a bit of good fortune once those balls are missed. He definitely left Ronnie red on. The one to the right corner down the top cushion. But I don't think he's got a very good angle on it. Does he have one into the right centre? I'm in the red clean, so maybe that suggests he's going to be taking this red on. Our 
referee tonight, by the way, is Paul Collier. Very proud Welshman. PC lives within walking distance of the wow. Celtic Manor. And if you missed the match this afternoon, we had a Welsh referee for that one as well, John Pellew. Just have a look at this shot. Ronnie plays this with topspin, but the cue ball here, when it cannons into the cushion rail, it skids right towards the cushion. You can see the expression on Ronnie's face there. He couldn't believe the slide of the cue ball from the cushion. And that's why he ended up with that tough black to knock in. But he did knock it in. And he's right in here in this third frame amongst the balls again. Sullivan. You can see the look in his eyes. I think he feels himself that he's in good touch. I thought that when we watched him against Robbie Williams in his opening round match, there was just something about his demeanor around the table. He was alert, intense and focused. He just looked like he was up for it. 23. He always wants to win but there was just something in his demeanor that perhaps we haven't seen for a little while. I think he fancies it this week. Just finished a little awkward there, Ronnie. He knew he couldn't avoid that red on the left-hand side cushion, but it's more important to stun through the gap of the others to leave himself some sort of a shot on the blue, but he's very cleverly developed that red. He just basically now needs to pot the blue. He knows he'll be on this next red. And now it's a lot easier for Ronnie to get onto the black if he wishes. 29. Thirty. I can't help but think, you know, Ronnie 37. loves playing Mark Williams, and I know Ronnie O'Sullivan has a great respect for Mark Williams's achievements within the sport. Thirty-eight. Who wouldn't respect them? And I think just Ron enjoys playing the other greats of the game. It's almost like he wants to impress them and show them just how good he is, and that he's still the kingpin. And there certainly wouldn't be many that he 45. respects more than Mark Williams. Forty-six. First time they ever played a competitive match was the Welsh Open. The last 96, back in 1994. Ronnie won 5-1. Who would have thought then that they would go on to amass 59 ranking titles between them? 53. 27 of them triple crown triumphs, including nine world titles and six Welsh Open victories. Quite some record 54. between the two of them. 
But you know, all of a sudden, Dominic, it's over 20 minutes since Williams last potted a ball. doesn't help does it 59 you sat in your chair watching Ronnie O'Sullivan make big break after big break <laughs> 60 and Ronnie really does know all he needs to know in terms of the ball reaction the speed of the cushions he's judging these positional shots absolutely perfectly I just wonder how much is that of that is down to the fact that he made that 65. little 35 clearance at the end of frame one. Did it help him in frame two when he made that terrific century of 102? 66. Well, Mark Williams got out the blocks brilliantly. The really aggressive plant early in the second frame looked as though it was going to give him a big break building opportunity. But he ended up tight on the blue. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 77 on the frame. O'Sullivan has had successive breaks in. 102 and 77 and all of a sudden he's 2-1 in front. Doing over the last 48 hours in between yeah. these two yeah, matches, yeah, yeah. Mark Williams and his sausages, <laughs> sausages his eggs and his well, tomato sauce. Yeah. 2-1 <laughs> <laughs> uh, then, O'Sullivan, let's go back. Yeah, it's interesting, Ken, talking about the running. I, I don't know about you, Dominic, but... I, I love running as well. I've, I've been out with Ronnie a few times over the years. I think his success is inherently linked to whether he's running and whether he feels as though he's in good physical shape. I think with him especially, a healthy body is a healthy mind and he looks about as lean as I can remember him for the last sort of what, four or five years? I know he got into boxing a little bit. I, I think the running is of pivotal importance for him. He's running well at the moment. And it's not a coincidence that he's playing well. No, I completely agree with you there, Rob. You're telling me the Championship League just a, about a week or ten days ago that he's running really well and he hasn't been as lean for quite some time. And I think, as far as Ron is concerned, I think he's at peace with himself when he goes out for these early morning runs at sort of 6 a.m. That's Mark Williams' first pot. Quite some time. Fortunately, he didn't land on a colour. It's Mark Williams' diet. Well, I wouldn't like to comment on it. It's not quite for me, I have to say. one and it's pots like that that become more and more difficult when your opponent is putting you under pressure and scoring heavily from every chance that they have So both blue and pink here. I think his decision will be based on whether the pink respots or whether it goes onto the black spot. You could just see the pink spot. It's very close to that red, so it will be certainly going on to the black spot here and that's not 
a bad thing from Ronnie's point so. of view. Eight. Oh, he's really got into the cue ball there. That was a fabulous shot. Now, will he go into the pack of reds? Or play for the loose one? He's just played for the remaining loose red there at the bottom of the cluster. Just have a look at the backspin here. Screws past 14. the pin. You'll see the check side on the cue ball, so it'll advance slightly up the table. Oh, he's controlled that very 15. nicely, except he's just a touch hampered here. Now, if he can't cue to the centre of the cue when he can't, he can only really pot the pink and let the cannon to the red below it just take care of itself. No guarantee he'll be on his next red hit. No guarantee he'll pot the pink. Twenty one. Twenty-two. What a shot that is. He's got the cue ball Rob, on the I've end of a say, piece of string at the moment. Sorry Rob, yeah, I've just got to say, that red is just knocked into the middle pocket. For me, it has to be the best shot in the middle pockets that I've seen in this year's Welsh Open. The angle was so acute and yet he played it with all that pace. I can't begin to tell you how good this red was. There's hardly any pocket opening there, and he's actually played it with that amount of pace. That was incredible. 29. Yeah, that was absolutely brilliant. 29. People occasionally say that he's not in the mood in certain matches. He absolutely is tonight. Thirty-six. Forty-two. Forty-three. Now I wonder if Ronnie will play a cannon here into that little group of six reds. You can just catch the reds directly above the pink, rather than the little trio to the right. He'd be guaranteed to be on something to a centre pocket, I'd feel. Decided not to. He had a natural angle to play for this one into the right centre. The pink will have to go back onto the black spot again. Forty-nine. I'm not sure what angle he's got on this red. He looks a little straight on it to me. He may have a bit of work to do here, positionally. 50. Wow, where's this cue ball going to finish? It won't be an off. 50. But my goodness, he'll have a devil's own job here to keep this break going after the colour. Doesn't need to take a colour on. I'm not sure Ronnie can get onto a red here. the brown in just couldn't get around the angles I don't see any plants anywhere I think that's going to be end of break 54 I was surprised he didn't go into them a few shots earlier is he going to take this red on very very risky as you can see 53 ahead just a couple more reds required but he's obviously feeling good
Ronnie O'Sullivan, 54. Big mistake from Ronnie. Shorter pace with the cue ball, plus he's pushed a red into a possible position for Mark. Now Mark needs to start knocking these in. Yeah, it's just so difficult. When your opponent's putting you under this much pressure, that type of pot just becomes harder and harder to knock in. really had a huge amount of table time over the last 10 or 15 minutes. He's been outscored by more than 200 points at the moment. That lovely early break of 73 is beginning to feel like it was a little while ago. Foul. Mark Williams, four. Red Rob, <laughs> that's on the pink spot, may pot into this right corner, as does the one below it, which is the one he's decided to take on. Oh, that was the initial red that I suggested. And good pot, now that's much better from Mark. Needs his cue ball to slow up though, and it's not. Or well, Mark will be disappointed. Will he still take the green on? No, he's running in behind it. But played it well. Mark Williams won. Well, he will take some confidence from that lovely long red. Foul and a miss. Mark Williams, four. I don't think Mark believes Ronnie will play it poorly a second time. Is he taking this red on to the left centre? It would appear so. Oh, well played. And this time he is One. on the colour. The position of the remaining two reds and the blue are very awkward for Mark. So a lot of work to do here to get back into this fourth frame before the mid-session interval. Three. Bearing in mind Four. how dominant Ronnie's been for the last couple of frames, Dominic. This is quite an important little visit for Mark Williams, even though we're only in the fourth frame. Yeah, now the pink goes back onto its own spot. Ten. It's not great for Mark because he's straightish on this red, as you can see. That's a power tint. I don't think this is going to finish Eleven. too well for Mark. Hmm. If he plays the pink to the green pocket, he can stun him behind the two reds. Oh, well played. The cue ball's just about got there. You can pop the red into the green pocket. It's very tricky, 17. though. And if he wants to be really, really positive, he could bring the other red above it into play. He left the red. Mark Williams just seventeen. Drop that red into the left centre. One. the pink and the red required for O'Sullivan to take a handsome lead into the mid-session interval. That little break of 17 for Mark Williams looked like it had just begun to get him back <coughs> into this frame. 
Seven. This bread will leave. The Welshman requiring snookers. Yeah, it's a tricky red. That green was causing. Only a bit of a problem there. Had to avoid it. He's considering not taking this red on. Right, so giving his opponent some respect. Problem is though, Money O'Sullivan has a lead of 34 points, so a 35 oh, remaining. Seven. But look where that black is. Mark Williams needs it to win the frame by a single point. Well, that was an attempt at a pot, I can assure you. Played in a typical Mark Williams fashion. Just trundling it in, virtually pocket weight. But it's developed the blue and made one of Sullivan's safety rather tricky. Yeah, he's over 45 seconds at the moment. Not very often. Ronnie O'Sullivan has to ponder his options for this long. I think he's worried, Rob, that if he plays the red he'd like to play and just misjudges it a fraction, he could pot the blue. So just tapping the red towards the blue. I think in the end that's probably the right thing to do from his point of view. There's not a lot Mark Williams can do here, but he may be able to snook up Ronnie if he plays it well. Oh, where's the red going? This red needs to stop. Oh, he's all right. A little dangerous. Now another thing here in the course of playing this safety, Ronnie will not want to develop that black for Mark Williams. There's a danger he could do. Now, can Mark sneak this red in? If he can, it's certainly possible he could get onto the black. <coughs> it looks eminently cuttable. I'm sure on your TV screens, but in actuality, it may be a lot thinner than it may appear. He's a clever player, though, you know, Mark Williams. I bet it's even crossed his mind to double it using the blue as a big pocket. It's his turn to take nearly a minute out of the shot. He's not sure about this. Well, if he doesn't think he can cut it in, surely the shot is to stun the cube in behind the black leaf, the red somewhere near the blue. try to double the red but you can see he's left everything on here and that will be 3-1 O'Sullivan at the mid-session interval one only needed that red to force Mark Williams to pursue snookers but he won't be coming back to the table in this frame. Five. Well, after a very, Seven. very positive start to the match, with an excellent visit of 73, fueled on a diet of sausage, egg and chips, 
Mark Ten. Williams has been a little bit of a passenger in frames two, three and four. Ronnie O'Sullivan has got his eye in on this table and done so very effectively. 14. 10th Welsh Open semi-final. And he would love an opportunity to Ronnie tie O'Sullivan with John Higgins as a five-time Welsh Open champion. Willow walks off first. Ronnie O'Sullivan will be very happy with the way the scoreline looks at the moment. He's good value for a 3-1 lead at the mid-sesh. So, uh, Mark Williams then with uh, a bit of work to do if he wants to peg back Ronnie O'Sullivan then as we head into this mid-session interval. Mm. and try and, as I said, exert a little bit of pressure on Ronnie O'Sullivan. I'm sure thousands of snooker fans across Wales might not be in the arena, but you can almost hear them in living rooms across the country shouting, come on, Mark. Let's see if he is on for a comeback as we rejoin Dominic Dale and Rob Walker. Thanks, Ian. Thanks, Ken. There certainly will be plenty of people glued to their TVs. Not just in Wales. All across Britain. And there'll be plenty of watching across Europe as well. And that is exactly the start Mark Williams needed. That's more like it from the three-time world champion. It certainly is. Question. I was asking myself, do any of the reds next to the black pot? Well, they certainly don't now. I think Mark there was hoping... Six. That somehow that black would be freed. And as you can see, both black and pink are tied up now. Oh, and you can see in that picture there. You can't get through to the red over the pocket. You should be able to plant this one onto it, though. Stun up for the blue without any difficulty. Oh, the red's covering Seven. the blue. Well, Mark may feel that's just a little careless to allow that to happen. I don't know. He's looking to see if the pink somehow sneaks through. Chances are Mark deliberately played that cannon to bring that red into play. Oh, that pink's tight. You'd want to be right in behind it. <sighs> ah, yeah, I didn't think he'd be playing it. I have to say it's a little bit unfortunate for Mark that he wasn't on the blue. As soon as he wasn't on that blue, it was always going to be tricky to Mark keep the break going. Seven. Ditto here, Johnny O'Sullivan, black and pink tied up, he has the problem with those balls now.
to be able to leave himself an angle on the blue just Six. to play delicate cannon into those three reds and the black. Seven. That was called a soft screw. Maximum backspin on the keyboard without playing the shot with too much pace. Got the required side of the blue there. It was a good shot. Thirteen. I don't know how some of these balls go in, I, do, I really don't, not at that pace. Curious looking table this Dominic with brown, pink and black all tied up. Yeah, Ron is very cleverly removed a couple of reds that were just above that little trio of reds and the black. Just to make the cannon into them much, much easier. Now if he can just stun into them here, he should be on a choice of reds to the left corner. So he's developed the black. I don't think you'll mind too much though it's finished along the top cushion. It's an easy enough pop ball 24. to roll in. But his next task, I think, will be to play for the red that's nearest the black spot. But when he does pot the black, he's tied up. He's just overrun that slightly. Well, this is a bit awkward for Ronnie. Very straight on this red. Cued across it. Thirty-one. Back straight into another red. Look at this. That's a red. Way onto the left-hand side jaw. Oh, he's taking this blue on. Foul. Wow. What did he foul there? The red or the black? Ronnie O'Sullivan, 31. Mark Williams, 7. The black. He fouled the black. Well, just look where he's Brand put the blue. One. Oh, what was referee? Paul Collier pointing to there on the brown. That was just a clarification for Mark. Which ball was brown, with Mark being colour blind. That's perfectly within the rules, just so that Mark can make a mental note which ball to avoid. Yes, of course it was, yes. Sometimes you forget that Mark's colour blind. It makes his achievements all the more impressive, doesn't One. it? Blind, you're perfectly entitled to ask the referee which colour is which. And according to the rules, they must answer that query. Three. This is a big frame for Mark Williams because he's relinquished the momentum. In the frames two, three, and four, ever since that aggressive plant. Left him the awkward blue, which he then missed. It's been all one-way traffic for Ronnie O'Sullivan. But if he could nick this one, the first frame after the mid-session, it is very definitely match on. Just cannot possibly see Mark getting onto a colour from this red here. Terrible angle on it, having to play it with the rest, so won't be able to play it with a great deal of power. It does go into a colour here. I think it'll be more by luck than judgment. Four. 
four. It was just too much to ask, really, I suppose. And when you do desperately need to win a frame to get Pinkle. back into a match, you don't want this type of a frame where colours and reds are awfully positioned. Mark Williams full. Mm. The best safety from Mark. One, he's left a pot onto the left corner and two, he may have left a cross double on <coughs> and the red near the right side cushion. was brilliantly done by Mark Williams. Yeah, it was very casually knocked in, wasn't it, Rob? Problem is, he's on the plaque. If he pots it and it goes back onto its spot, it'll block the simple red to the left corner. A lovely shot, it really was, and you can see when he'd left, he'd have missed the red. Now, is this black in? Oh, it's not quite in. And he's left Mark a red Williams on for Ronnie. Won. It wasn't an easy black, it has to be said. He played for the red along the top cushion towards the left corner. He didn't play for the one that's nearest the black spot because it wouldn't have gone if that black went in. Ooh, a mistake from Ronnie. It's amazing what these intervals do. They really do ruin matches sometimes. It's a real momentum buster. Yeah, you suspect the way that Ronnie was playing before the mid-session, had the match carried on, he may have made short work of the remaining required frames. <coughs> well, from a neutral's point of view, we'd love to see this turning into a really dramatic match. Both players slugging it out. But you get the feeling for that to be the case. Mark Williams needs to get another one on the board quite soon. Well, that's another mistake from Ronnie. I just wonder if Mark can power this in and just try and develop those two reds a little. Oh, the double kiss hasn't oh. helped him. So even if he pots this black, just can't see him getting onto a red. Oh, that's a very, very good try. Eight. Mark Williams, eight. Well, I'm sure we'll be in for some very canny tactical play now from both players. in the frame, just a four point separating the two players in favour of Ronnie that is, it's four points ahead cleverly hiding the red in bulk this could go on for quite some time I wonder if 
Oh, and you can see enough of the red near the side cushion to try and double it. This is an interesting passage of play, isn't it? These all three reds now are grouped together. Got to be very careful. It's so easy to be inveigled into playing something just a little bit too extravagant that risks knocking in a ball that's over the pocket, in this case the brown. We said at the beginning of the night we'd be watching two of the all-time greats, and we are. We didn't promise it would all be blockbusting big breaks. Who's going to be the first to flinch in this fascinating exchange? I don't think he intended it to be quite that good. red just above the blue. He needs to be a little careful. Well played, he's blocked off the edge of the reds to the right, so there's no way Mark can do much with this. Intriguing couple of minutes in this match. Well, Mark just left a little space there between the red and the blue for Ronnie to just leave some distance between them all. That could be disastrous. That cue ball deviated quite significantly. Now Ronnie can play the cue ball into bulk. safe as well. And it 
it's from about here where you can tend to just try to do too much get a bit of extra space between the balls and accidentally not in the brown Mark may be able to try and snooker Ronnie in behind the black here, I don't know yeah, he tried to. <coughs> Longest frame of the match, so um, Robin, I'd suggest if you fancy a cup of tea, now's the time to put the kettle on. <laughs> yes, yeah, not a surprising statistic, is it? The way the reds are spread. And the way the brown is blocking that pocket. But what's so interesting about this exchange is the speed with which each of them are making their decisions. And the fact their faces are an absolute picture of concentration. Just wondering, Rob, if Mark's made a mistake there. I don't know if this red will cut in. The one that's nearest the black. If it does... Could Ronnie pop the brown afterwards? Well, in goes the red. And if he's on the brown, Ronnie will be One. delighted. He is. That pots. Oh, this has worked out well for Ronnie. Keyboard's in bolt, yes, but... Red's a certainty. And if he plays it very delicately, Five. he could leave himself on the pink. Six. tied up but he is going to need the tricky yellow let's have a look at the scores he's 17 13. points ahead so red black would be 25 and the good thing from Ronnie's point of view he can leave himself as straight as possible on this yellow he doesn't need to worry at all about position to green oh, this is looking pretty good even so, this yellow can still be missed. 21. Twenty-three. And how key will this frame turn out to be? Twenty-six. The door was ajar for Mark Williams. Possible opportunity. To reduce his 30. deficit to one, as it is, Ronnie O'Sullivan has won his fourth frame in succession. Ronnie O'Sullivan doesn't matter about the blue. There's a nod from Mark Williams. Ronnie O'Sullivan, <laughs> a curious frame after the mid-session interval. He's now two away from the final. Mark Williams has it all to do, trailing 4-1. You sense his hopes of winning the Welsh Open. Just be slipping away. Six. Mark Williams to break. Well, the most decorated left-handed sneaker player in history is under real pressure here. He started so positively, Mark Williams. But it's all been Ronnie O'Sullivan since frame two. Can Willow halt the momentum of a man who seems absolutely intent on a sixth Welsh Open final? Just have a look at the judgment of pace there from that safety shot from Ronnie O'Sullivan. 
and he's put that red near the left hand side cushion which makes the safety shots off the left hand edge of the pack very risky and that's why Mark elected to Foul. trundle and into miss. the pack on the right hand Daniel side Sullivan, four. left it short of pace though Dominic, I just wonder how different the middle part of this match would have panned out if Mark had ended up nicely placed on a colour after that really aggressive plant that he potted right at the start of the second frame, having taken the first at 73, because I think if he hadn't been so unlucky with the reds as spread as well as they were, I think he might well have had a two-frame advantage. Then the dynamic of the match would have been completely different yeah, that's a very good point you make. And you're absolutely right. We're watching some classic safety here from both players. <laughs> Great safety from Mark Williams. Oh. Has he hidden the reds with the green? Oh, I think Ronnie can just get through to the faintest edge of this right hand red that's just sticking out there. That could have made such a difference. the brown from Ronnie's point of view. Cue ball now so tight to the bolt cushion. Can only really play these plain ball. Beautifully struck again from Mark. That's a great shot. Worthy of a round of applause. I haven't heard many tonight. Unfortunately, Reds have finished over both left and right corner, but the problem is Mark Williams 4 on down under all kinds of pressure. Neither of these Reds are particularly easy, but I feel he's going to have to take one of them on. He can't leave them there.
The trouble is, Dominic, he's potted quite a few of these long reds, but he's missed a few as well. Seven out of thirteen. Big moment, this. Just not quite clicking at the moment for Mark Williams. Favourable angle on the red. Ronnie has a bit of a problem of his own here. Looking to see if he can leave the cue ball near the jaws of the green pocket. Because he, even though he'll leave a red on for Mark Williams into the right hand corner, the cue ball will be immediately travelling into all those reds. That's what Ronnie's very good at. He does this a lot. Sometimes if he doesn't feel he can stop you from having a go at something, you make sure he leaves you the worst possible angle on them. Ronnie O'Sullivan, one. on for Ronnie, took it on. I'll tell you what, he'll like where this cue going to finish. Or will he? Can Mark get past the brown? He can. Why well, would you believe it? But even with the angle he has on the red here, the cue will still be travelling into other balls. Can he find that little gap there in the middle of all the reds? Oh, he could. Well played. That was a really good shot from Mark. One. And he hasn't finished too badly on the blue. Not perfect though, by any means. Six. Seven. Well, he potted excellent long reds in the final frame before the mid-session. And the first one after the mid-session. But ran out of position and lost both of those frames. Is this going Twelve. to be different this time? Well, if that pink pots to the right corner, Mark's got a good chance here. Thirteen done with that keyboard just running on another couple of inches nineteen Mark Williams, Slight 19. Loss of concentration there. Maybe he was just thinking of the chance that he had here to reduce the deficit in this match. He just didn't keep his mind in the present. Who knows? Maybe he had too much eye on the positional aspects of the shot. But either way, he can afford that type of mistake at this stage of the match. One. 
and his reaction showed you how costly he knew that may be. Seven. Okay, never more lugubrious. Eight. Tell you what, Dominic, we've got so used to watching Ronnie O'Sullivan over the last 20 or 30 years. 11. It's easy to get a little bit blasé and forget about just how incredible his longevity is. His first ranking title in 1993. And here he is, 28 years later, giving himself here a fantastic opportunity 17. To perhaps seal a 38th major ranking crown at the age of 45. It's an amazing record, which could just 18. keep on getting better. Yeah, another point worth mentioning. At the age of 45, many people require glasses to play snooker form other tasks in life, but one in like quite a few of us, I suppose. I'm 49, I don't need to wear glasses yet, but neither does Ronnie. I think Ronnie, if he wanted to play another 10 years, could easily do so. Such is his talent. 24. Wondering if the two reds near the black spot are a plant to this left corner. Ronnie's just had a look at them. They don't seem far away. Oh, that previous camera shot. I think they are just set to the bottom jaw, but he's, yes, you can see there. But they could be made if Ronnie felt he had no option. Oh, he's overscrewed this. He's ended up on the bolt cushion. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen Ronnie overscrew the ball like that before. Amazing. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 32. Let's have another look at this red that Ronnie's just played. Ah, right. I think, looking at that angle, he's trying to screw there into the other red, yes. He didn't really overscrew it at all. He was trying to develop the other red near the right side cushion and just ran past it. mentioning Mark Williams has still only made <coughs> one break over 30 this evening and that was that break of 73 in frame one. Ronnie O'Sullivan has made breaks of well 32 in this frame he's made 35, 102, 77, 54 and in that rather scrappy affair in the previous frame 
he breaks a 31 and 30 so won that quite convincingly too and that's exactly why he's outscoring Mark Williams by around about 250 points in this match so far You would think, Dominic, this is an absolute must-win frame for Mark Williams if he's to stand any chance of mounting a monumental comeback against his fellow class member from 92. Absolutely so. Yeah, both players averaging 19 seconds a shot. We have Sullivan's pot success. He's at 92%, Mark Williams is what? down at 78 it doesn't seem as though Mark's playing that badly. Oh, this was a much needed long red from Mark, but he's got a very tricky pink here. Because he won't be playing playing it with a great deal of pace. And he's hampered, as you can see, so that makes this pot rather tricky. And it needs to go in. an excellent pot from Mark, it really was. This rain could have quickly disappeared. Seven. Have that not gone in? Eight. So, just ten points behind. Two easy reds remain, but you'll have a problem with that one on the bolt cushion. Fifteen. This is their fourth match, by the way, in the Welsh Open. I mentioned earlier on that their first professional encounter was in the round of the last thirty six sorry, the last ninety six, back in nineteen ninety four. Mark Williams beat Ronnie in the semi finals in 1999 en route to his second Welsh Open title 21 and then Ronnie won their only encounter since the last 16 match in 2012 Mark Williams 21 and he's left Ronnie a chance here on this red are the Welshman's hopes beginning to drain away here Mark's one mistake wasn't really with the miss pot on the red, it was the position on the pink before he couldn't get close to it. It wasn't far away, it was a very tricky pot. So just a couple of points between the players here as they approach the difficult red that's in bulk. And he won't be on it here, but he can play very, very good safety. I don't think one is going to risk this red along the bolt cushion, is he? No, but you can see, even playing the shot left-handed. Ronnie O'Sullivan, seven. Displayed a beautiful touch. left the red on for Ronnie but all hope isn't lost because Ronnie will certainly need that tricky brown one Seven. 
Nein. So just the brown. Going for the double this to leave Mark Williams needing snookers. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 12. The Welshman just about still in touch here. In frame six. Close. Second attempt at frame ball. Four. And the mountain. Just got a little harder to climb for Mark Williams. Ronnie O'Sullivan, four. Definitely worth coming back to the table though. Only one snooker required. No way Mark Williams was going to concede at this stage of the match. What a miss with the black tight to his own cushion there he's only got the pink to snooker in behind and I've got to say that's a great shot he's played pretty easy swerve though you can just see that you can see how dangerous these shots are I mean when he played that at a very quiet pace but even so that cue ball dangerously close to the center pocket Sullivan five and the five. Oh, Ronnie heads off. Beautifully done. He's now one away from the Welsh Open final. This is a huge task, even for a man of the calibre of Mark Williams. There's always hope. There's always hope. You never throw in the towel, and Mark Williams won't do that. You know, he, he's still trying hard out there, but it's, it's just proven very, very difficult. Every shot that he plays now, there'll be pressure on it, and that's, uh, that's tough to play against. So can the Welsh hero mount some kind of response here on home soil? He was absolutely delighted when the news came through that this tournament would take place in Wales. Up until now, everything has been at Milton Keynes. And I know he feels quite passionately that he wanted to do something special this week. 
in memory of the late great Doug Mountjoy. One. 25 years after his first ranking title, which was the Welsh. All the omens and the signs were there. But Ronnie O'Sullivan has just been too good tonight. And unfortunately, Mark Williams has just made too many Six. mistakes. And the legendary long pots have been interspersed with plenty of misses. And you just can't afford to do that against Seven. O'Sullivan in this kind of mood. Sullivan has won every single one of the frames that have gone a bit tight. The frames that you might feel would suit Mark Williams. On to Ronnie as well, because no doubt about it, he's one of the game's finest tacticians also. But he's been very focused and determined this evening. Ronnie O'Sullivan. And now he's just a frame away from victory. And the place in tomorrow's final where he'll be playing Antrim's Jordan Brown. I wonder if he's still watching the semi-final here. Ooh, red. Not to be trying to turn up a little there, but it went in. I'm sure Mark Williams may feel that he's played his final shots here in this 2021 Beck Victor Welsh Open. <coughs> I wonder if he feels that he'll be getting back to the 21. table. Twenty-two. With that red near the right corner, if Ronnie wanted to, he could even screw into the pack of reds again here. He'll develop a few more. He'll feel he's guaranteed to be on it. And nobody plays these shots better than Ronnie. He's got a choice of two reds here. And he's developed all the 29. other ones to perfection. Looking on us for Mark Williams, Rob. Thirty. Yes, I think he probably will feel barring an unforced error he's played his last part in this semi-final his first in the Welsh Open for six years 37. it started so promisingly with that break of 73 but he hasn't got near the table since really too many unforced errors pot success of 77% and Mark Williams is a man who sets himself very high standards and he's disappointed with that. From Ronnie O'Sullivan's perspective, it's an opportunity 45. to tie John Higgins as the most decorated Welsh Open player in history. John's on five titles. Ronnie's four crowns coming back to back 2004 and 2005. And then 2014. 2016. The only one he lost was Mark Selby's first ranking title when he came from 8 5 down against O'Sullivan to take a decider back in 2008. One thing is for certain every 46. Welsh Open final in which Ronnie O'Sullivan has played has had drama one way or the other. He came from 8-5 down to beat Davis in a decider in his first. 7-5 down to beat Hendry for his second. He finished a comprehensive victory over Ding with a 1-4-7. And then for his fourth title, five years ago, he came from 4-2 down against Neil Robertson. Another absolutely superb left-hander. So whenever he's made the final, it's always been dramatic. Will that be the case again tomorrow? 51. Well, I'm certainly looking forward to the final tomorrow. It's very rare these days you get a very low-ranked player get into the final, but Jordan Brown has more than justified his position in tomorrow's final. He's played some great snooker this week, and particularly today in his comprehensive 6-1 victory. Steve Maguire, who's been playing some really good snooker himself. 58. Well, Jordan Brown 
alluded to the fact that he quite fancied taking on Ronnie O'Sullivan in this big final. 65. The Northern Irishman who five years ago was working in a petrol station. 66. What a task facing him because Ronnie O'Sullivan is a couple of balls away from having only conceded two frames en route to the final. He is in imperious form and the 33 year old Northern Irishman is going to need to produce his absolute best tomorrow to stand any chance 69. against the reigning world champion. Well, he'll yeah, definitely come back 69. to the table. Only one snooker required. No way Mark Williams would walk away from the table in this situation. He'll have a go. But this has just been too good from O'Sullivan. From the start of the second frame, Mark Williams hasn't had a look in. Yes, I'd describe Ronnie O'Sullivan's performance as very, very competent. One. Well, he's had a few really good long reds, but for much of the match he hasn't been able to follow them up. There are some positives to take from this match for the Welshman. His victory over Tom Ford yesterday means that he will be competing in the Players' Championship next week in Milton Keynes. Seven. He's hanging on by his fingertips Eight. in this match. Can he show a little bit of Celtic character here? Because he potted the pink from his opening long red. In tie now with one snooker, so Mark's task here will be to pot two of the remaining three reds. 15. High value colours, blacks preferably. But if he can just leave one of those two reds remaining near the pink, he's guaranteed, you'd think, to be able to leave a very telling snooker for Ronnie O'Sullivan to try to escape from. 22. Needs his cue ball to run. Ah, oh, that's a problem for Mark. So he can't leave the cue ball below this remaining red. It's not straight enough on the black, so he'll have to change his plans here. Because he needs one snooker to tie, he may decide now 30. to pot this last red with the black. No, he has left the snooker. It's not a bad one, but I don't think it can cover one of his Seven. with this shot Rob Ronnie could just try and drop that red wow well, she's played it well I thought she was going to cannon the red full ball and then Ronnie could just trundle it over the green pocket
Maybe Ronnie will now try and play the red over the green pocket delicately. Try and force Mark Williams to pot the red and try to get onto the black. Every player judges these situations differently. A real right or wrong thing to do. That's a bit of a mistake from Ronnie. There's a half chance here for Mark to get a snooker. Oh, has he caught the red too thickly? I think he has. Mark can come off this top cushion, although he may be able to get through to the red if he can see it full ball. Oh, he can't. Can't quite see it full ball. he have been able to stun him behind the black had he been able to do so. But this frame match is still alive. All credit to the Welshman. <laughs> Determined to make Ronnie O'Sullivan earn the last frame required to return in tomorrow's big final. Fascinating at times, but not the fireworks we were hoping for between these two long-term rivals. through to the potting angle here of this remaining red to wrap up this match finally and that will be that there's the elbow tap a great start from Mark Williams but from then on Ronnie O'Sullivan was just too good and the reigning world champion will be coming back tomorrow for a sixth Welsh Open final where he'll start as overwhelming favourite for ranking title number 38 that was clinical from the rocket. He'll be back tomorrow. To give us his reaction, Ronnie, well done into a final again. Uh, how did that feel? You looked very sharp out there. Yeah, no, um, I knew I had to play well, you know. Uh, just, just, just knew I had to, you know. I've been playing pretty decent all week, so, um, yeah, I felt like I was queuing okay. Um, but, like, I, I heard what Ken said, but, you know, it's, you can only play as well as your opponent plays you sometimes and I couldn't push the boat out because if I did then obviously I'd have got punished heavily, I knew that so sometimes you have to kind of just, you know, it was tough, tough match play that so, um, you know, I was, I was really pleased with that performance, you know. Yeah, you look very, you look very sharp, Ronnie. Uh, I know you've been practising a little bit with Martin Gould and uh, you can certainly see it in your game because every facet of your game, even when you were playing good safety, you were putting a lot of concentration in, you were very focused. 
No, I've just, I've just changed my grip, you know, I went back to how I was playing, um, you know, from 2011 to 2018, I've just changed my grip and I'm not hitting as many bolt colours on my safeties, I'm getting a better throw on it, better pace, um, feel like I can, you know, um, keep the white ball a bit closer to the object mm -hmm. balls when, you know, the next ball when I'm in, in break building, doesn't feel as comfortable, but, you know, um, it's, it's, I'm not making as many mistakes, you know, so, uh, and, I, and I feel like I'm, when I'm playing well, I'm playing very, very well instead of playing okay, you know. So you need to do that these days to, to win tournaments. And I still want to win tournaments, you know. I know I, know I say I'm, I'm here to enjoy it, and I am, you know. Even if I lost tonight, I'd have still had a great week and enjoyed the match. But, yeah. you know, it's better winning than losing. So, you know, you always yeah. got to try to keep, uh, you know, uh, tweaking things all the time, you know. And, Ronnie, look, you've got a chance to equal John Higgins' record. He's won it five times. You could now equal that. I don't know if you were out running earlier on, possibly, but did you see the Jordan Brown uh, win over Stephen Maguire? And what do you make of that tomorrow? I, did, I didn't see much of it, no, but, you know, Jordan's a, a good curious. hits the ball really well. Um, he's been gaining experience all the time on the tour. You know, um, this isn't no freak result, you know. Um, he was bound to get to the latter stage at some point. You know, I know Stephen gave him a bit of help today, but he still had to do the business and pot the balls. You know, he's got a great temperament, great match player strokes the ball in very nicely you know he's got a good good technique so um you know it's a tough tough game thank you very much ronnie well done tonight ciao see you in the final ciao. commiserations obviously you'd love to have got to another welsh open final um you said it was going to be difficult against ronnie it always is but you wouldn't have envisaged that kind of scoreline tonight i'm guessing um i mean i got nothing but respect i mean he just outplayed me in every mm. department he I mean, he was awesome and everything. He out me, out safety me, out everything. I mean, just he put so much pressure on your safety game, your potting, and, and everything. I, I felt I didn't play, didn't do that much wrong, and I got absolutely pumped six <laughs> one. Uh, there was one red I missed on at four one, where I couldn't even pot it, and I tried to drag it in with some side and missed it. But apart from that, mm. just absolutely destroyed me. Yeah. I just I got back to that second frame, Mark. I mean, if that blue goes in when you made that wonderful plant, you got off to a great start winning the first frame. But if the blue goes in the second frame, you know, you could have been 2 nil up and it could have had a different bearing on the match. Yeah, it could have. I mean, I put, I put a good plant and got a white out. I was really unlucky not to come on a pink, really. And yeah. uh, I was on the blue, but the red was in the way. So as soon as I hit the white, I had to whip my cue to the side to get it away, and that's, I think, why I missed the blue. But mm. if I come on a colour the, the way I started, I probably would have gone 2 0. I, I mean, it's still, you know, I still could have ended up losing 6 2 anyway, but <laughs> it would have been a bit, uh, a bit different for him. But I, I mean, his safety game, I don't think I've ever played him when he's not tried his absolute nuts off. I've seen him play other <laughs> players, and he just, you know, goes for everything. But every time I play him, I'm nailed to the cushion, he knocks sentries in, he knocks long ones in. Oh, I'd like to whack him over the head with a cue, if I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go and do that now, Mark. But listen, uh, we've enjoyed watching you uh, throughout the tournament this week. Commiserations tonight. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.